So 12 heads of state and uh, over 100 ministers are expected starting from today here in Durban, South Africa for the high level sessions of these negotiations on climate change. We need them to raise the stakes and step up to the plate and do what has to be done to get a positive outcome at the end of the week. The major issues are still what they were, the future of the Kyoto Protocol, whether there's going to be a process to develop a broader framework that includes the United States, China, other big emitters who aren't covered under Kyoto and also what happens with finance. There are options on the table, they're starting to engage. We're hoping with the presidency and ministers taking over now from negotiators, we can get political decisions on these big issues over the next several days. We're hearing indications that the Kyoto Protocol is likely to survive uh, this negotiating process, but the question is, will it come out of here on life support? The other major issue is a question of ambition. Many campaigners and activists are saying that the negotiators inside these rooms seem to have forgotten what the science tells them. We're still missing that magic ingredient of, of shifting, uh, shifting speed towards really getting a two degree outcome here. Those current pledges are really only going to deliver emissions reductions capable of limiting warming to around three and a half or four degrees warming. Now that's going to be enough global warming to stimulate runaway climate change which is going to unleash all sorts of awful impacts on people around the globe. The world really needs to cut its emissions by 25 to 40 percent in the next coming years or we face the very real possibility of catastrophic consequences of climate change that will become irreversible. The small island states have put out a proposal calling for high level sessions all throughout the next year to look at those ambition levels and try and remind all the countries of the world that just doing a little bit on climate change isn't enough. As our children will say how could we be so irresponsible and in fact immoral to allow half the species of this planet to become extinct, never to be brought back again. How could we do it because we maybe wanted a bigger car or a more luxurious lifestyle that we then jeopardized their future? It is a deeply moral issue and, we, and we've got to recognize that fast because um, the longer we delay, the worse it's going to be. I think the focus has shifted uh, away a bit from uh, Canada towards uh, the position of China, India, Brazil, the U.S. You know, can we get these countries to move into more alignment with AOSIS, the LDCs, the European Union to get the kind of ambitious package at the end of the week we need? So the big issue now uh, seems to be the question of whether this conference will end up with a mandate to negotiate a long-term comprehensive binding deal on climate change. Uh, that's coming down to a uh, difference of opinion so far between the United States and China on how to move forward with uh, those negotiations. The heads of those delegations are meeting today. I think we'll find out in the next couple of days exactly where they stand.